In my home kitchen, I usually make French method macarons for small batches, and I often bake just one tray at a time. I am going to show you today some tips and tricks and what you can do if you want to bake two trays at a time in your home kitchen. It works for so many people. Honestly, it works for me, but I just really like and for especially the home baking size batches, I make one tray at a time works just fine for me, which is why I generally do it that way. But two trays is possible. If you are baking in a commercial kitchen or you have something larger, obviously way more trays are also possible. Um, but you do have to be careful because the more macarons you put into your oven, the higher risk you have for things going wrong, which is largely due to your heat source and humidity. So first let's whip up a batch of macaron shells. Again, oftentimes at home, I use the French method here. Um, I am going to add just a tiny bit of pink gel food coloring. I had my room temperature egg whites streamed in my sugar, had a little bit of cream of tartar in there, added in that food colorant. Now I'm going to get a really, really nice stiff peak. With the French method for meringue, you really, really want to ensure that you have a nice stiff peak. If you are using the Italian or Swiss method, you can have a bit of a softer peak, but for the French, you really, really want a nice stiff structure. I like to transfer my meringue to a larger, wider bowl. This helps me a lot to visualize everything that is going on as I incorporate in those dry ingredients and then begin my macaronage process. In the beginning, you don't have to worry too, too much about exactly how you're mixing. You just wanna make sure that everything is incorporated. I like to add in my dry ingredients in about three additions and just generally kind of scoop and swirl everything together, not going too crazy. You could add all of the dry ingredients in at the same time, but adding it in three or four additions really helps to make sure that you are mixing everything evenly. You're not ending up with any pockets of dry ingredients or pockets of meringue, anything like that. After I get all of the dry ingredients incorporated, I am going to begin the macronage process. And at that time, I'm going to be a bit more intentional about deflating the batter. I'm going to be using a couple of different methods of scraping the batter kind of against the sides of my bowl. Some people call that painting the bowl with your macaron batter. I'm going to be scraping the sides and scooping it back over onto itself, doing some kind of folding actions, all of that. And then I'm going to keep going doing that mixing process until I reach the ribbon stage. Now, again, macarons have so many variables. For some people, in some kitchens, in some climates, even for your regular circle macarons, you might want to do more or less macronaging than I do. If you are making shaped macarons, if you want some texture, there are so many different things to consider when you are doing this mixing process. So if you see me doing something that is not something you do in your kitchen, or if you give it a try and it doesn't work in your kitchen, that is okay. As soon as I get to that really nice ribbon stage that works for me, I'm gonna transfer this to a piping bag fitted with my piping tip. I generally use an 804 or an 803 again. That has a lot to do with personal preference. If you use something larger or smaller, that is okay. Then I'm going to get to piping just like normal. Then we're gonna get into this whole two trays in the oven situation.
All right, so I've got my batter here. I've got my silicone mat. You can also use a Teflon mat or any other surfaces that you want to bake your macarons on. I've got a little template just to make sure that all my macarons are the same size. You do not need to use one. You can also buy a ton of macaron baking mats that have a template already in them, so you don't even have to worry about that. I am pushing straight down with my piping tip perpendicular to where my baking mat and counter are counting to about three in my head if you want to go by numbers instead of by a template then i'll stop the motion stop pushing the batter through the piping bag with my wrist and then kind of use a swirling motion to cut off at the top to make sure that the shells are as flat as possible before i even tap the trays or anything like that i also do have some a tiny bit of granulated sugar mixed with a little bit of pink glitter luster dust just to sprinkle over the top. I was using these macaron shells for a vanilla white chocolate ganache macaron I was making and because I had that really super simple basic flavor for the inside I wanted to do something fun with the shell um, and I also just wanted to demonstrate that you can have any of your normal macaron shells in the oven while using two trays. It is fine <laughs> again this method does not work for everyone i don't really know enough about ovens to know exactly why i do think it is possible in most ovens to bake at least two trays and you don't have to worry about what kinds of macarons you are baking let me just sprinkle on that sugar i'm gonna rest my macarons like normal i know some people love the no rest method personally i think 20 minutes of resting before that first tray or in this case two first two trays go in it really works for me but again do what works for you while i am getting my macarons rested and have that skin form on the top of them i'm gonna go over and start messing around with my oven Okay, so before I turn my oven on, I'm going to open this up. Usually I bake on just the top tray of the, the two racks you see there. Usually I bake right in the middle of my oven. I'm going to move that up one rung, but leave both of my wire racks in still as much as the middle of the uh, my oven as possible. So now those two wire racks are in the middle of my oven. There's just one space between them. Now I'm going to preheat my oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit then I will put my macaron trays in one on the top rack one on that bottom rack now for me I'm going to show you a time lapse here as proof these really were in the oven at the same time no monkey business here um, there are a lot of different options to make this as successful as possible here for this first batch I just let them I'm sorry there's a bit of a glare it is not perfect the lighting is not perfect but as you can see they're all rising normally everything is perfect now because of my oven with that lower rack it is baking a bit more quickly and so if I leave these two trays in at the same exact time and temperature the bottom ones tend to be a bit crispy and then the top ones are either perfect or slightly underbaked so I remove that bottom tray first add another 30 45 seconds for the top tray then I pull those out too. So for me, that is the method that I like the best for my oven. As you can see here, they are lovely, nothing weird. Let me pull one off so you can see the bottom is perfect. I can press just a little bit into the bottom. The top is really firm. Nothing is breaking or shattering or anything like that. I can't push my fingers through them. The feet are gorgeous. 
turned out great. Here is that other side. This was the one that was baking on the bottom. Again, I can push my finger just a tiny bit into the bottom. Cannot push my finger through the top. Looks like a fantastic macaron shell to me. Let's put these to this side and let me just walk you through a couple other things you could do if you're baking two trays and maybe not having a lot of success. Again, I recommend trying to keep the racks in your oven as much to the center as you possibly can. However, if going through the entire, for me it's about 17 minutes in the oven, is not seeming successful, if you're ending up with lopsided Macs or busted open Macs or whatever it is, every five to eight minutes you can open up your oven get in there and either rotate the trays one on the top goes to the bottom and the bottom to the top or you can also um, kind of rotate them on the same rack that they're on but kind of back to front right take it out and the macarons that were at the back of the oven turn it so they're facing the oven door um, depending on kind of the heat sources in your oven what's going on the airflow all of that you may be having problems with one area versus another and so that may be something that helps you as you are opening the oven door and making these adjustments another thing that is happening besides just rotating where your heat source is or you know avoiding any hot spots or things like that you're allowing any excess moisture that was trapped in your oven you're allowing that to escape and when moisture is inside your oven, especially when there are more and more and more macaron shells, um, that moisture is what can really easily lead to exploding macaron shells. And so if you are trying to bake two trays and you're having some volcano effect going on, um, make sure to give this a try. Open up your oven door, even if you don't even rotate your shells, just physically open the oven door. <laughs> Let me just show you that finished result again came off really smoothly I can slightly press my finger into the bottom cannot press my finger into the top really nice even feet they are perfect just like normal again I don't always do this especially in my tutorials because I make such small batches in my home kitchen but baking with two trays in your oven is absolutely 100% achievable. I hope this information was helpful. If you have any additional questions, make sure to leave me a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!